Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Kovalt and in this video we're going to go over how to use the uh, uranium lead dating method to uh, find the age of a rock. And so uh, that is what usually the uranium dating, uranium lead dating method is usually used to date things that are suspected to be quite old like rocks, fossils, uh, things like that. Ages of earth, meteors as this problem is uh, going to be pointing out. Uh, carbon dating, carbon dating is usually used for living things. So carbon 14 dating, uh, you're usually not gonna use that to uh, date uh, something that's very old. Um, so for example, you might use it for a fossil, but with a half-life of, of a, you know 5,700 uh, years, uh, probably not going to be as accurate as you would for if you're using um, uranium lead uh, carbon dating. But uh, radio uh, radiocarbon dating with carbon 14 is very useful for living things, so it probably is the uh, go-to one for uh, uh, for fossils and things like that. Um, <clears throat> but for the age of the Earth and rocks and things like that, then uh, Uranium lead car, lead dating is going to be what you're going to want to use. So I'm going to go over a couple of problems. Here's the first one. Uh, so we have a meteor that contains 0 0.556 grams of the lead 206 to every one gram of uranium 235. So we have a ratio of 1 to 0.556 grams. Assuming that no lead at the time of the formation of the meteor, right? So when the meteor was first formed, there was no lead, right? That's one of the assumptions in, in dating methods is that you had zero amount of the daughter isotope to begin with. So any da daughter isotope, in this case lead, that is found in the object is assumed to actually come from the original uranium. That may or may not be true because of like leaching and the movement of isotopes in and out of the environment. So, but it is, it is a common assumption that's used. Um, so we're gonna use this to determine the age of the meteor. We're gonna, they give us the half-life of uranium-238, the decay from uranium-235, sorry, to uh, lead-206 is about 4.5 billion years old. So, well, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna have to take the half-life and put it into the equation and solve for the rate constant here, k. So let's do that. So we have 4.5 billion years. That's going to be equal to 0 0.69, oops, 0 0.693 over k. Solve for k, and you are going to get 1.5. Four, 1.54 times 10 to the negative 10, I believe. Let me double check. Yes, negative 10, uh, and that's per year. Okay, so this is the number per year that is decayed. Um, so now that we have K, we can use K here, but we also need the ratio of the amount of uranium that we have left and the amount of uranium that we began with. All we know right now is we have 1.00 grams of uranium uh, for every 0 .0, 0 0.0556 grams of lead. So we need the original amount of, of uranium. That's where the assumption that all of the lead we got came originally from the initial amount of uranium. So we need to uh, convert, convert the grams of lead that we have back to uranium and then add that amount, add this amount to the, uh, one, the amount we have left over and that'll give us the uh, starting amount, supposedly. All right, so what we need to do is we need to take this amount, so zero, 0 0.556 grams of lead, 206 over 1, 
and we're going to have to use the molar mass to convert. So the molar mass uh, <clears throat> uh, here will just use uh, the 206. So here we don't want to use the the uh, what do you call it? The average atomic mass because we're dealing specifically with this isotope here. We're not dealing with every single isotope because the average takes in all the isotopes and averages them out and you get a weighted average. But since we're focused on a particular isotope, lead 206, that is the mass of the isotope. So we're going to use that. So here, so we would have, for example, uh, 206 grams of PB. 206 is going to be equal to one mole. Oops. One mole of PB206. So grams cancel out. We got moles. Now we want to convert that to lead. This is going to be a one to one ratio. So for every one mole of lead 206, uh, that came from one mole of your uranium-235. So it's a, it's a decay, it's a one-to-one -one, uh, mole, one-to-one uh, -one ratio. So one mole of PB206 comes from one mole of uranium-235. So the moles of lead-206 cancel out. Now you have moles of uranium-235. And now we're going to use the mass of uranium-235. Again, we're not going to use the average. We're just going to use the mass of this particular isotope, which is 235. So one mole of U-235 is equal to 235 grams of uranium-235. So the moles of U-235 cancel out. Now you've got grams of uranium-235. We're going to do our calculation. And when we do the calculation, we get 0 0.6424. So 0 0.6424 grams of uranium-235. Uh, we're only allowed up to the third decimal point uh, because we have three sig figs. Three sig figs is the least number of sig figs. But we're going to keep an extra digit just in case. Uh, rounding error. All right, so now we have grams of the U-235, the actual grams of the U-235 that decayed. We add that to the one. And so our actual, our actual amount here. Uh, the one gram plus this gives us 1.6424 grams uranium-235. That's what we started with. So that's our initial amount. And now we have our uh, actual amount at time t. This is what we have left. So now we could plug everything into this equation. So we have the natural log of the amount at time t which is 1.00 grams and the amount at initially is 1.6424 grams that's equal to k here's our k so that's oh negative k sorry negative k 1.54 times 10 to the negative 10 per year multiply by t. So all we need to do is solve for t. And when we do that, we get t is equal to 3.2 times 10 to the 9. I want to make sure I got that right. 9 years. So that is the age of the meteor. So I hope uh, that was helpful. Again, we had to solve for the rate constant k first, putting in the half-life. So we got k. And then we had to convert 0 0.556 grams of our lead that we got back to uranium. 
so that we could get the original amount of uranium that we started with. So we got this was the amount of uranium that was decayed. We added that to the one gram to get this. And now we have the ratio of the one to 1.6424 grams here. And we plug everything in and we got the H. Uh, now uh, let's do the second problem. Okay, so uh, here's the new problem. I need to change this to a two. Um, really quickly, I realized one of my mistakes when I was writing it down. The answers were the same, but instead of uranium-238, I had wrote, written down 235 the whole way, but I had calculated it using 238, using my notes. So um, the answers were all the same, except uh, instead of 238, I was writing down 235. So but the answers that I got were all, all the same, so that's, that, that should work out nonetheless. So, sorry about the confusion. All right, so let's work on this problem here. So, same kind of problem. We have a rock contains a ratio of P236, PB236 to uranium-238 mass ratio. So, we got the mass ratio here uh, between these two, and we've got the uh, uh, age... Uh, we need to find the age of this rock. So here we have the PB236, uh, 206. We're going to assume that that is uh, zero at the time of formation. So here, again, we solved this before. So K again, let me write this down. Uh, K again is 1.54. So 1.54 times 10 to the negative 10. Per year, 1.54 times 10 to the Okay, so here we go. So, what we're going to do again is uh, we need to convert the 0.154 lead to uh, original amount of uranium-238. So, again, we're going to do start with 0 0.145 uh, grams of uh, lead 206. We're going to uh, uh, convert that to moles. So we got 206 grams of lead 206 over one mole of lead 206 grams cancels out. Now we got the one mole ratio or one to one ratio, one mole of lead. 206 to one mole of uranium 238 so moles cancels out and then you got the molar mass so we're going to use one mole of u238 to uh, uh, 238 grams of u238 <clears throat> moles cancels out now we can calculate the answer Okay, so we get 0 0.1675, 0 0.1675 grams of the U238. We add that to the leftover amount, so we get 1.1675 grams of the U238 to begin with. So now we plug that into here along with K, and we solve. Let's go ahead and do that. And so what we have here is we have natural log of 1.00 grams for the amount we have at time t over the original amount equal to negative kt. And when we solve for t, we get, and we get 1.0 times 10 to the 9 years. Okay. So that is it. That's how you do it. I hope you find this uh, video uh, helpful. If you like my videos, here, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, put a comment in the comment section. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.